In this video, I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process to create the Lions Are Always Brave animated presentation. The very first thing that you need to have is a good presentation to be narrated and animated. Next is the plan for what type of animation that you want to have, where you want the narrations to be placed. So as you can see here, in addition to the image and the text, I've already added an arrow and a play button here. So what I want these icons to do is when I click on this one, the arrow, it will transition to the next page. And I want when this button is clicked, my narration will be played. So right now we don't have the narration yet. But I'm going to show you action feature of PowerPoint. So click on this one and click the insert tab. Go to action button here. And then you'll have some options. I want it to hyperlink to the next slide. And when it is click, I want the program to highlight the click. And then click OK. I also want that my slides to only transition when the arrows are click. So I'm going to go to transition and turn off on mouse click so that it will only transition when I click on the arrow. So let's preview it. So as you can see here, if I click on this slide and any other parts of the slide, the slide won't transition to the next slide. But if I hover on top of the arrow, my cursor changes to hand. And if I click it, it brings me to the next page. So that's how you use action button. So as you can see here, I've already recorded my narration using Audacity. I like using this to my narration using Audacity. I like using this tool because it is really easy to use and it's free. If you find a part that you don't like, you can just select them and then um, apply the lead and it will go away. Or if you want to keep it, you can undo it. As you can see here, when I do my recordings for my slide, I, I usually record and then put space and then record again. And these audio clips will be saved as separate files. Next is to export your audio clips into audio files. So if you look at this part and maybe other parts too, let me select and zoom it in first. You can see here, this is the background noise that was captured when I did my recording. So what I will do right now is to apply noise reduction. There are two steps in doing noise reduction. The first is to let the system know which one is noise. So right now I'm telling it this is the noise. And the next step is to select all the audio recording and apply the noise reduction using the noise profile that you have saved earlier. As you can see here, the background noise is very much diminished already. I suggest that you don't apply too much noise reductions. Uh, one or twice is fine, but don't do more than that. Right now, I think our file is ready. So I'm going to select this audio clip here and use export selected audio. After all the recordings have been saved, the next step is to import these recordings into our presentation. Click Insert, Audio from my PC, and click on the file that you want to add to your slide. I like to move these audio files to the top of the slide outside of the frame because sometimes, sometimes I make mistakes and I just forgot to make it high during the slideshow. So I like to do this as a precautionary measure. Then we'll go to the next slide and add the next audio file and repeat the same process to the next slide until all of the audio files have been added. So, so the next step is to add trigger to the audio. So we want this button, when it is click, it will play the audio. So click on audio, go to animation, trigger, on click off. Unfortunately, there are a lot of objects here which you do not know um, which one is the icon. So to help you with this, you can use selection pane. Go to home, arrange, selection pane, and click on the object. 
and you'll see that it is actually graphic 11. So let's go back to the audio file, animation, trigger, on click of graphic 11. So we have applied trigger to this audio file. That's how you apply the trigger to an audio. And the last step is to save your presentation as a PowerPoint enabled slideshow. Go to file, save as, and under the name of the file, you can select PowerPoint macro enabled show. That's it. So I hope you enjoy using the animation features of PowerPoint for your educational purposes.